You're watching Cartel TV and I'm Simone. In this video, I'll outline what you need to know when it comes to charging an EV, in particular, the all new Hyundai Ioniq 5 that I have here. You have a storage area in the front where you can keep your charging cables. But I've found it's only really big enough to store the emergency charger supplied by Hyundai. Now, to charge the Ioniq 5, the outlet is at the back right of the car and the only way to open it is actually from the key fob. I had a look inside, but I couldn't find a button to open it with. It's fully automatic when it opens and closing it can be done either by by using the key fob or this button behind the indicator lights. Now, these lights show you how much charge you have in the car, and it's a great idea because you can quickly get a reference without having to turn the car on or get in the car. Another cool thing to take note of is the fact that along with any apps that you may be using, the dash will also display the charging speed. So check it out when you're charging your car because all charging stations actually give out different levels of charge. The supplied emergency charger from Hyundai will connect to a regular power socket and then to the Type 2 input on the car. This will typically be the slowest way to charge your car with an estimated charging time of 31 hours. When charging at public charging stations, some stations may have cable leads attached to them, but more often than not, we've found that most stations will require you to have your own Type 2 to Type 2 lead. So it might be worthwhile checking whether your new EV purchase comes with one, as you'll probably need it. we found that most new EVs, including this Ionic 5, don't actually come with a Type 2 lead. So it's a good idea to pick up your own for a few hundred dollars. I've got a Type 2 lead with me today, and as you can see, it's too big and bulky for the front bonnet storage area, so I've had to keep it in the boot instead. There are a few ways to activate charging stations like this Charge Fox one. You can simply pay by swiping your credit card here and hitting the Charge Now button. Or you can download the Charge Fox app, create an account, and then select your charging station and begin the charge from the app. This will allow you to remotely keep an eye on how much charge you've received from the charging station, as well as remotely stop the charging at any time with the click of a button. One thing I notice on this app is it doesn't actually show you how how much it's costing you until the end of your session. Hmm, that's a little sneaky. Charging times will vary depending on how much power a particular station is emitting. People still have a lot of anxiety around charging and range for EVs. But once you have your own electric car, you'll quickly build a habit around living with it and I think you'll actually find it more convenient. If you have a charger at home, it's really simple. And even if you don't have your own charger, you can have meetings, shop or exercise at venues near EV charging. That way you aren't waiting for your car to charge, but instead your car charges while it waits for you. Well, I hope I've given you a clear outline of some of the steps involved in charging an EV, such as this amazing Ionic 5. Please do ask any further questions you have in the comment section below. Let's get this EV combo started.